My name is Julian Ma. I'm a research professor at St George's Hospital Medical School in London. And I head up a team of uh, researchers here looking at the prevention and treatment of infectious diseases like HIV, tuberculosis and rabies. I started off uh, at university studying dentistry, but I very quickly became very interested in science and research. At that time, was just the moment of discovery that you could genetically modify plants. So I started working with plants, and then I realized the potential of plants to address many diseases. So for example, we have a plant here that has been genetically modified to make a kind of protein that neutralizes the virus that causes HIV, the AIDS virus. The hope here is that we will be able to produce a gel or a cream that could be used to block transmission uh, from an infected patient to a non-infected patient, so prevent infection of HIV. Traditionally, plants have been used for centuries to make medicinal products. But the difference here is that these are not natural products. The process of genetic modification allows us to take genes from many other sources and insert them into the plant. And in essence, what we're doing is using the plant as a production factory for the medicine itself. So this is the first part of the process of making a genetically modified plant. This is Luisa, uh, one of our PhD students from Brazil. She's got a tobacco plant here, which is not a genetically modified plant, and she's just cutting off a leaf and sterilizing it. She's going to cut the leaf into small squares, and then we use a bacterium in which we've already inserted the gene that we're interested in. And we'll let it then incubate for about 24 hours. And during that time, the bacteria will move our gene of interest into the plant nucleus and incorporate the gene into the plant's own DNA. And eventually the plant cell will repair and then start to grow again. And once we have a plantlet, then we can move it into soil and take it up to the greenhouse to grow into a mature plant. And so the next stage of the work is to see if that plant is producing the protein and how much it's producing. Verena is another PhD student in our group and she's going to go through this process of extracting the proteins. I cut the plant, add a little bit of water and then I simply grind the leaf to release now our protein from the cells. I'm going to load our sample to the gel and it takes about an hour till it's finished. And I mean, it's a very interesting process because the plant takes like three months to grow and now we actually see if our protein is in it and if we have enough protein to process it any further. The next step of this process is to do a positive identification for the protein that we're specifically after. And I've got an example here. We've managed to pick out um, one specific protein out of that whole mix. So a band of the right size, of nice bright intensity, that's the plant we want to take on to the next stage. So we bring that plant back up to the greenhouse and we'll let it go to flower and also then to set seed. And that seed locks down the genetic modification. Here's a seed pod that is ready to harvest. 300 to 400 seeds per seed pod. And given that one plant can produce easily about 100 flowers, that really is a lot of scalability. Now the whole process takes about six months to this point, but it will take at least another three years before we can get into the first clinical trial, and probably another four years or so before this gets to doctors in hospitals. The young scientists are in a very interesting position because within their lifetime, if successful, this technology could become very important and they could be really intimately involved in some really exciting new developments. I do see this as being a specialised use of plants to benefit mankind in the future.